Hey guys, it's Han, and today we have the Tamiya TTO2 FT Land Feeder Quad Track on the table. It's quite a mouthful, um, but it is a pretty unique and interesting vehicle. Uh, I think Tamiya released this earlier this year or late last year. I can't quite remember. It's been a long year, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a really unique release. And I know a lot of people saw my unboxing video for this and have been looking forward to me um, talking about it and running it. Um, so. Just right off the bat, as the name implies, it is based on the TTO2 on-road chassis, uh, which is a big controversial point for this truck because uh, they try to make a trail truck out of a touring car chassis with tracks. It's, it's a very weird little combination going on here. But um, before we dive into that, overall, the truck does look pretty cool, um, I'll, I will admit. The body is pre-painted in black, so you don't have to paint it. Um, you just you can just put the the uh, decals on here. Um, I personally quite like the look of it. Uh, the box art with the decals, it kind of has that uh, Jimmy John's kind of color scheme going on. But I think it looks pretty cool. Um, the Land Freeder body, I've always been a really big fan of. Um, it was originally for the Bush Devil. Um, so the Bush Devil and the Bush Devil 2 and um, obviously the Land Freeder. Uh, they all have this body on it. It's kind of like a Dodge Dakota Ford Ranger kind of American small pickup kind of body style. Obviously unlicensed. Uh, and it has a nice look to it. Um, overall, nice boxy shape. Pretty handsome looking truck. Nice proportions to it. Like the like the bull bar, light bar in the front. You can't put lights in the front, in front of this, but it does look cool nevertheless. As well as this roll bar back here. That's a little nice um, touch. Um, and this roll bar, I believe they used to uh, make uh, light bucket, not, not light bucket, uh, light pods uh, for the top of the roll, uh, roll bar as well. Because I believe this is the same roll bar that they used on the uh, King Blackfoot as well as the Blackfoot Extreme body. So if I pull over my Blackfoot over here, you can see this is the same, kind of the same, uh, it is the same roll bar except this one has the uh, light pods on the top. So, I thought that was pretty interesting. So, overall the presentation is quite nice and I do like the look of this truck. Um, one thing about the body though, is I didn't build the body right. Because uh, they, they do tell you to cut out like a 90 degree Lexan piece to brace this part right here um, on the inside. Because, because of the way this, this body is molded, it is very thin right here. So if you pick it up, you can see it's flexing really bad. And um, yeah, it definitely needs, needs a brace on the sides here. So um, don't mess it up like I did, I guess. But yeah, overall very nice looking truck. I'll just do a little quick turn around. Now the the second most obvious part about this truck is obviously the tracks. Um, you can build the tracks in two different ways. I built it in the standard uh, tracks. Um, you could also do like a, every other track piece, like a, a more of a claw, and they call it the grouser tracks, I believe. Um, and that will give you more traction on like soft off-road surfaces. Um, I, I will show you guys. Uh, I will show you guys this thing driving in a in a, in a little bit, and. Um, Basically, as you'll, you'll, you'll kind of see from the driving, uh, it would have done better with the grouser tracks. I'll probably have to take these apart and rebuild them with the grouser tracks because honestly, the flat tracks do work pretty well um, for what they are, and uh, but they do struggle with traction uh, sometimes. And I, I think the only thing the flat tracks would really be good for is if you're doing a lot of like hard surface running, like street running or something like that, which... In my opinion, I don't know why you'd be using tracks for the street. At that point, just use wheels. So um, I would go ahead and just build them with the grouser tracks to begin with. I think that'd be a better performing option for you. And this is, you're not really going to run this on the street. It's going to run mostly on grass and dirt and snow and stuff. So there's no real point of having it perfectly flat like this. But speaking of the tracks, the tracks, um, I had a lot of doubts about it. But they're, priced, they're, they're actually surprisingly nice. Um, you can't. It does have a little bit of adjustment uh, on this wheel right here. You can extend it in or out. 
depending on um, how tight you want your tracks to be or if you want your if you want to add more links or whatever um, so that's pretty interesting all the wheels that uh, all the wheels are plastic but they do roll pretty well um, it, they do tell you to put in plastic bushings in here I put brass bushings in here uh, just for a little bit more longevity you can put bearings in here but um, in my opinion for the kind of running that this thing is mostly gonna do bearings are gonna get rusty and seize uh, and I would rather have it slightly more resist uh, uh, slightly more resistant all the time than be fully um, get seized at some point with the bearings so that's why I have the brass bushings in here um, another thing that I thought was interesting about the tracks was I originally thought that they're gonna be just like plastic tracks and I was concerned that they wouldn't have enough traction and they wouldn't uh, they would like wear out really quickly but the tracks are actually like embedded with like a rubber surface so they do have quite a bit of traction um, and then if you get the grouse if you put the grouser tracks on it the the blades and the grouser tracks are also rubber blades so that uh, uh, that will also aid in traction so the tracks actually work really well um, and they uh, are actually better designed and better built than I initially expected. So I'm quite impressed with the tracks. Um, it has very limited suspension. Um, only this this middle wheel here moves up and down. Um, the the other other wheels are solid. The tracks themselves have a little bit of articulation forward and back, like this, but not much. So they are still quite quite limited. And obviously, being an on-road chassis, the up and down movement is quite limited as well. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, quite uh, surprised um, and uh, happily surprised about the, the quality and the build of the tracks. One thing to note though is the tracks have a lot of pieces, as you could probably tell, and you have to build four of them. So building the tracks honestly took as long as putting the decals on the body and building the rest of the truck. Um, so basically, this truck will kind of take you three times as long as building any other entry level to me a kit because there's a lot of stickers on here you have to put on so that takes a while and then the TTO2 chassis is pretty simple so that's pretty straightforward but then the tracks themselves also take like um, a day <laughs> to build so uh, definitely need uh, a lot of time set aside to build this thing but once it's put together it's a pretty cool looking truck and um, I'm quite uh, impressed with it So, taking off the body real quick, you can see I'm really happy about this Lexan um, cover here because it really does a very, very, very good job of keeping dirt, snow, whatever you want out of the chassis. Um, keeps everything clean, keeps all the electronics protected. So I'm really happy with this. I really hope that they start selling this cover separately. So I can use them for like other on-road builds or rally builds. I think it'd be really cool to have this thing separate. Um, but the inner fenders here and the way it covers everything really nicely. And it has enough openings um, to allow for some cooling. Uh, so um, uh, I think overall it's a pretty nice design. You can paint it if you want. I just left it clear and the instructions tell you to leave it clear. So that's how it is. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's one of my favorite parts about it. And it just goes into uh, with some Velcro on the side. So pretty easy to take in and off. Um, and then the chassis obviously is this typical TTO2 chassis. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of like a, a basic TTO2 chassis. So it has the, the plastic center uh, shaft. It has no bearings included. It has the uh, pogo spring, like friction shocks, not oil shocks. So. Unfortunately, the version of TTO2 that they, inc they included for this truck is uh, a little bit low end, but um, especially for the high price of this truck. But I think because most of the, the cost went into the actual truck, uh, actual tracks, as well as technically including two bodies with it, um, is I think what um, upped the price a, a little bit. Um, the other unique thing is obviously being an on-road chassis, it's not geared low enough to be a trail truck. So they do include their special um, uh, crawler, 35 turn motor. It, is, it does look like it's a rebuildable motor, though I don't know anyone that nowadays that would rebuild a brushed motor. But um, it is pretty unique and pretty cool that they included this motor. This motor by itself is also quite pricey, and I think that's also why the price um, is a little bit higher as well. Um, 
Uh, but enough of me rambling for now. Uh, let's just take it outside and see how this thing runs.
So fortunately, it does look like it snowed a little bit today. So I can actually test this thing on snow. I am just kind of driving it in a corner of my apartment parking lot, as you can kind of tell. Um, again, still kind of trying to figure out places where I can comfortably run RCs. Uh, but you can see this is top speed right now. This is like full throttle, and it is definitely. <laughs> very slow very very slow actually uh, which is not surprising considering it has uh, tracks and also considering that it has a 35 turn crawler motor um, it's it is quite slow but the good thing is the tracks actually do give it a lot of torque um, this being technically an on-road chassis it is a, little, a bit high geared um, for being a uh, off-road whatever trail truck kind of thing so the, the tracks do help it a lot be a lot more capable um, as a trail truck. And um, you can see it's, it's running pretty well. Uh, it's Like I said, it, it is slow, but the tracks give it kind of that interesting like interesting factor um, enough to the point where like I, I don't actually really mind that it's slow. And also being tracks, you don't really want it to go that fast because um, you will definitely break the tracks if you do. But you can see it's getting over a lot of stuff a lot more than any other TTO2 will be able to get over. Um, again, it's, but, um, of course it's not completely invincible, but, but you, can, you can see it, it is running really well. This is running with a 4200 milliamp hour 6L nickel metal hybrid battery pack. Of course, you're going to have a little bit more power with a LiPo. But even with the 6L, it is running pretty well. Um, one thing is with the lock diffs or semi lock diffs and also having the tracks, it doesn't steer very well. Um, you can see this, the, the turning radius is quite, quite large. So you do need a pretty large area to uh, steer this. I think my steering servo might be a little bit too weak too um, for these tracks. So that might be something I'll look into uh, next. So as you saw, it ran pretty well, um, surprisingly well actually, better than I expected um, in the snow and just overall like light duty trail running. Um, there are some points to make about the truck though. Um, I am going to call it a truck because it has a truck body on it and Tamiya wants it to be a truck. Uh, so uh, one main point is because it does use tracks in the front and has to steer these tracks, you do want a pretty high torque servo on the front. Um, I have this like cheap Amazon servo on here, um, not the not the red, red body one that like everyone likes. It's just like a really really cheap one. Um, I would go with a, a twenty five maybe thirty kg servo because it does kind of struggle to turn these, especially off road. Um, so pretty high torque servo you you would want for this. Um, the 35 turn motor does work really well, but I do think it's a little bit slow. I think it would have been just fine with a 27 turn basic Babuchi motor, uh, especially since the tracks slow down the truck and um, gear down the truck quite a lot. I don't think the 35 turn was quite necessary. And then the uh, final point is, even though it did quite well and impressed me uh, for what it is, basically a TTO, TTO2 on-road car, um, uh, even though it was quite capable for the type of chassis it was and had pretty low center of gravity because of the flat chassis, uh, unfortunately ground clearance is still an issue. It is quite a bit higher than a regular on-road TTO2 or even you can see here, um, even the TTO2B, it is quite higher than the TTO2B as well, but um, unfortunately for like really rough surfaces, the chassis does get hung up in the middle a little bit. So um, ground clearance is still kind of an issue. It is quite flat surface down here. So it does tend to slide over things, but um, that is something you want to watch out for. The, uh, the friction dampers, uh, because it is the trail truck and you're not really doing that crazy of driving with it, I don't think. Um, I think the friction shocks are 
fine. It is quite bouncy though, so it, it could use oil dampers, but I don't think it took a um, priority with this thing, unlike the uh, on-road ones, which drive like crap, in my opinion, with the track or the friction shocks. Um, so there's some quick little things to think about if you are interested in this truck. Um, also, with the TTO2, uh, like every TTO2, the entire drivetrain is plastic and there's no slipper clutch or anything like that. So um, you do want to be careful uh, if you kind of put like a really powerful motor in here for some reason. Uh, the drivetrain is a, a point of concern. And um, what else? Oh, the diffs are technically locked, but it does use the standard diff. You just put to me as like sticky, like diff locking putty in it. Um, I don't know if I didn't put enough in, but you can see sometimes it does defeat the, uh, the uh, putty a little bit, but um, for the most part, it works pretty well. I think if you just put more putty in there, it'd be fine. The way I have it set up, it kind of works more like a limited slip diff, so it does defeat it sometimes. And I think that helps a little bit with the turning radius because having tracks and having locked diffs and not having that much steering steering throw to begin with, um, it does have a really wide turning radius as you as you saw. So um, overall, I think it's a pretty cool truck. I'm actually happier than I expected uh, with it, uh, though that is because I didn't pay full MSRP, not MSRP, full price for this, full like market value for this. I think mar the market price for this is over $300. Um, and for that, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, I paid closer to a little bit over 200 for this. And even that is a little bit steep, but I think that's more reasonable for this thing. Um, considering it is a TTO2, um, considering that the body is not licensed or anything. Um, it does include a lot of cool parts, but I think for $300, you can do better, especially if you're looking for a trail truck. Um, granted, for, for being a tracked trail truck, it is quite cheap. Um, so uh, it's something that you're really going to have to think about what exactly you want to do with this thing, because otherwise I don't think you're going to find the value or the fun in it. Um, so kind of an interesting truck, but I'm personally happier with it than I thought. Um, I think I may actually leave it the way it is for a while because I, I, I do quite like it. Um, but, uh, a little bit of a longer video for this. It, there was a lot to talk about because it is a kind of a unique vehicle, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoy some of the other videos I'm going to, uh, that will be coming out. Sorry, my cat is wanting attention. So. Uh, but for now, that is it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you guys next time.